The scene at Budgeons in Holt, where fire was reported at 9.15 last night. The flames reducing 35 years of history to this. It's just shock, pure shock. I was sort of out until one o'clock last night, so I saw I was in the thick of it. <laughs> well, social distancing went out the window, that's for sure. But, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of tears, and, yeah, just general shock, really. Deborah Jickles has worked here for 21 years. Well, it's just got to me, like, seeing it like this. I didn't, I didn't think it would, but just seeing it, it's just awful. The local MP too spent 11 years working for the C.T. Baker Group, one of Norfolk's oldest businesses and the company which owns the store. I have been absolutely amazed in the last few hours by the outpouring in the community of people saying, let me help, you know, people offering their facilities. This is a really amazing community. Many people here today have told me that this could not have come at a worse time for the town. Not only is this a major local employer, but it's also the town's only supermarket. And during the lockdown, many elderly and vulnerable people were relying heavily on its home delivery service. 90 people worked at the store, which was closed at the time of the fire, so nobody was hurt. Well, it's absolutely devastating. Um, it's heartbreaking, actually, Jenny. We've spoken to every single member of our team today and they all said, what about our customers? We're seeing the senior management of Budgeons tomorrow um, and it's really just sort of um, taking one day at the time at the moment. An investigation into how the fire began is underway and an emergency phone line will start operating tomorrow for anyone needing urgent food supplies. Jenny Kirk, BBC Look East, Holt. Parked up and going nowhere. Although the government says we're on the road to normality, some businesses are still struggling. Sanders Coaches in Norfolk stood down five bus routes today after a no-show from its diesel provider. The boss says he has to prioritise getting thousands of children to school this week. Probably the biggest mover of school children in North Norfolk and of course we run all of the local rural bus services so I am obviously concerned about people being isolated in their villages if we don't turn up. So what we're trying to do is uh, make sure that we don't do that and people uh, can uh, rely on our services. Sanders' fleet of 85 vehicles use around 3,000 litres of diesel a day. If they don't get a delivery confirmed by Wednesday, they'll have to make further changes. We may get some on Friday, um, but they can't guarantee it. And all the other suppliers that we've rang can't deliver until after the 18th of October. The UK shortage of specialist HGV drivers led to panic buying, but now driving businesses are struggling as a result, and local authorities are calling for urgent action. Uh, we've raised uh, with uh, government officials and with ministers uh, the specific problems that we have. If the children can't get to school, the parents are going to have to make other arrangements or actually miss work themselves to stay at home and look after them. The army will provide tanker drivers from tomorrow to deliver fuel, something this business says might be vital to keep it moving. Zoe O'Brien, BBC Look East. Emergency services gathering tonight in Jaywick. Over 200 police, fire and Coast Guard personnel. Their task? To evacuate up to 3,000 people at risk from a tidal surge due to hit tomorrow lunchtime. Police visited houses advising people they should leave either tonight or tomorrow morning and make their way to a reception centre. At least we know daytime will all be out anyway, so... And are people worried when they hear this? I mean, there's obviously a little, obviously a little bit of I think there's a little worried. bit of panic. Everyone on the text messages, and if they evacuated yet, like I said, the neighbours next door, they, they get all panicked because she's, she's not very well next door and things like that, so... But I think a lot of people are actually planning to stay. Barry Schimmel, who lives on the seafront, is planning to stay put and help neighbours who may be vulnerable. But when we had it last time, it was fairly calm as it is today. It come right up to the top of the water within, I'd say, inch and a half, two inches maybe, and then it just went back. But it was lovely to watch it. It was so calm, it was... People were coming down here to watch it. Were you not worried, and are you not worried about what is in store tomorrow, potentially? No, not really. If it comes over, it comes over. Nothing anyone can do about it, really. At the Tendring Education Centre, volunteers set up an emergency reception centre, a temporary home for evacuees, and if need be, their pets. 
year. We have experienced in this in 2013. We had a similar event, but our main concerns tomorrow is the big difference is that we've got exceptionally strong winds uh, between 40 and 50 miles an hour, potentially with gusts stronger than that are going to coincide with a high tide just after lunchtime. So that's why we've put in place this operation to evacuate safely the people of Jaywick. Forecasting the severity of a tidal surge is notoriously difficult, but the police say people should heed the warnings, leave their homes and take no chances. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Jaywick.